To me, this is one of those amazing Bible prophecies. Before we get into it, I, I want to show you the development of this chart. Now, I don't know all the way back there if you can see it. I only have so much of a board to be able to draw on. And uh, do I have that on the right level? Anyhow, each line, this is actually drawn to scale. Three one hundredth of an inch equals one year. And uh, what you're going to see here is, is we're going to actually get to studying Methuselah. He's the oldest man in the Bible. He lived 969 years. And, uh, and while that sounds real strange to us, that before the flood, people lived that long. What's interesting is when you compare some scriptures is we find that so unusual that, that people who aren't Bible believers just don't believe it. Uh, there are liberal preachers who try to say, well, years were different in those days, and, and they try to analyze how to break that down where they lived a normal, what we would call a normal 70-year lifespan. But the Bible knows how to tell time, and, and so they did live that long. What will be interesting in the future, there's coming a time when Jesus Christ returns and establishes his kingdom like he promised to do on this earth. And when he does, he will reign for a thousand years, and there'll be no death during that time. So people will again have this longevity, and Methuselah won't be the oldest man who ever lived. <laughs> There'll be people that will live the whole thousand years, and maybe even be a few, you know, like 50 years old when the Lord came, so there'll be 1,050 after his thousand-year reign. So uh, uh, what we find unusual, they're going to find, when they live that long, they're going to find it unusual that we die so soon. Because if, you know, you're living in the millennium under Christ's reign and you, you hear about some an old man lived to be 105 years old, they go, what? I didn't even start having kids till I was 105. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, I want to I show you just some, even some connections, realizing we're going to work our way up to the flood. And, uh, and actually, Methuselah is going to be a real important person that connects pre-flood to post-flood. And... Uh, um, but he's, he's interested, interesting for other reasons than that. So in your Bible, look, look at Genesis chapter 5 and verse 1. Get in, familiar with this chapter. It says, this, uh, this is the book of the generations of Adam. And uh, so he, you know, God created Adam. And by the way, zero is the day of creation. So he, you know, when he was created, that's year zero. I didn't go like... Usher has a way where he actually goes backwards. You know how B.C., you, you count the days backwards. And they, they think that Adam was created 40, no. yeah, 404 B.C. Um, no, 404. 4,000. Anyhow, I forget what the number is. Probably on my Bible here. But anyhow, I start with the number zero, and we're just going to count forward just to, you know, figure out lifespans. So you got Adam who's created. Down in verse 3 it says, And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Now he already had Cain and Abel and there was already a death that took place. But uh, Cain is cut off from God. Abel died because Cain killed him. And that they were the first two sons of Adam and Eve. But now we pick up with the son Seth. And it tells us that Adam was 130 years old when Seth was born. So we know we're in year 130 when Seth was born. And that's why I said they're having kids at 130. And, and then the, the verses will go on and tell us uh, how long Adam lived after he had Seth. For instance, verse 4. And Adam lived after he begot Seth 800 years and begot sons and daughters. Everybody always wants to ask the question, where did Cain get his wife? If he was the first child born to Adam and Eve that survived, Abel died. So where did Cain get his wife? Well, if Adam and Eve lived 900, well, verse 5 says, And all the days of Adam were 930 years, and he died. But even after Seth, he lives 800 years and begot sons and daughters. So they had, some, they had a lot of children. In fact, I don't know how to speculate, it just... Just a nice way to think about some things, or interesting way, not nice, interesting way to think about things. If, if Adam lived to be 930 years old, I don't know how long Eve lived, because it's not telling us that, but, but say, you know, he, he's, he's had, had his third son here at age 130. So if you start thinking, well, they're in no hurry to get married in those days, and you'll see how, how late some of them have children, 
Say Eve becomes productive. Well, she was productive since she was created. But say she starts producing children at 100 years old. And say, you know, that there's, you've got to stop sometime. So let's say she stops when she's 600 years old. That's 500 years of having children. Part of the, 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 the prophecy about her concerning her sin is that she's going to, mul her, her conception will be multiplied. If she had a child every two years for 500 years, <laughs> that, that's 250 children. And you say, well, it sounds like a little... <laughs> So, so let's say she had one child every five years. Certainly she did that, and maybe longer than the 500 years, but say that's, what she, that's still 100 kids that she had by herself, let alone her daughters growing up and having children too. So you realize how fast the earth is going to multiply before the flood. And, uh, and then interesting just to think of, you know, like Cain, you know, if Adam and Eve had children, Cain could have married a woman that he never even knew. Because, you know, she's way down the line uh, of, her, of, her, of his parents having children. And uh, so it's not like today. And anyhow, it's just interesting to think about that. Pick up in verse 6, it says, And Seth lived a hundred and five years and begot Enos. And then it tells you how long he lived after Enos. And then it says, all the days, verse 8, all the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. Uh, every one of these, you, you name a person that's coming from the lineage of Adam, usually like the first son of each person, and, and we're tracing them, and then we're tracing when they have their first child or their first son, and then, uh, and then each one ends and he died. Some people call Genesis chapter 5 the graveyard chapter because the result of sin in the world is death. And, uh, and there's spiritual death because Cain is cut off from God. Adam, God made a sacrifice so that, Cain, or that Adam and Eve had their sins covered by the blood until Jesus Christ comes and becomes the sacrifice for sin. And through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, all of us can be forgiven of our sins because our sins have been dealt with, paid for by the Lord Jesus Christ. But so... There's still there's spiritual death and then there's physical death as a result and so physical death each one of these people end by saying and they die, died. But what's interesting is if you take for instance Seth is 130 years old, uh, Adam is 130 years old when Seth is born, then it says Seth is 105 years old when Enos was born. So we know that Enos was born in the year 235. You see how my chart works here. So we're, we're, we're counting the years. When we're all done, if you do that through this whole chapter, you're going to come up with a flood that took place in years 1,656. Uh, at, since the beginning of, of creation there, that's, that's when the flood came in Noah's day. So you have each one of these genealogies, and, and they're fun to, to work your way through. Um, I guess we just skip a bunch of the names here and just work your way over to verse 20. It says, And all the days of Jared were 960 and two years, and he died. And here we go. And Enoch lived 60 and five years and begot Methuselah. Now actually, Jared is the father of Enoch. And when, when, he was or when Enoch was born, you keep adding all these years together, you're out to 622 years into, in, uh, since Adam. You have Enoch, who's now born. And Enoch is an interesting fellow here because it says, And Enoch lived, uh, and Enoch, verse 21 again, And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days, now 300, that's the shortest anybody ever lived, other than Abel. We don't even know how long Abel lived before Cain slew him. But uh, th this, he, he, he dies in 365 days. It says, and all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Years, not days, years. So Enoch, he actually died in 987th year since creation. Um, there, there are a couple interesting facts about that. You realize his lifespan, that most of his life, he was, Adam was still alive. That's why I put this to scale so that you could see that. 
and, and Adam's still alive, so he knows Adam. What's interesting, Adam died at year 930. 57 years later, Enoch, he doesn't die. Look what, what, what it said about him. It says, uh, uh, back in 22, it says, And Enoch, well, verse 21, I'll read that with it. Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the years of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. Here's a fellow that, that had a walk with God and he never saw death. God took him. Now that, that's interesting because what I mean by that is Adam... Forget Seth, uh, Abel's, you know, he's the first guy to die. And I don't know when Cain and the descendants of Cain, because the Bible's not tracing that. But out of the godly line that we're following here in Genesis chapter 5, Adam is the first man, to, the, the second man to die. Abel's dead. Now Adam died after 930 years. They, find, they, they see the, the result of sin. Adam dies. 57 years later, the next person that disappears from the earth doesn't die. He gets caught up into heaven. Enoch, he's translated. God took him. Uh, there's a couple others. There's Elijah that got taken away too. But, but here, this is the first man of, of longevity, Adam. He dies. 57 years later, someone gets raptured. That's what rapture caught up. And, and God took him. That's an interesting thing because the promise that we have of God is that whether we're dead or alive, we'll be caught up together with the Lord to meet the, the, the Lord in the air, caught up with those who have d died before us to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. In Israel's program, there's a hope of some never dying and going into the kingdom. Uh, John's prophecy, or in the book of John, uh, the Lord said uh, to Mary, is it, or Martha, that... Uh, I'm the resurrection of life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth on me shall never die. And you have that all the way back in Genesis. You have a, a picture, a testimony of that, uh, that God is able to do that. But th this Enoch who, who walked with God. Um, well, let me get back there. Let, let's, let's learn a little bit more. Let's move on. He, he has, his son is Methuselah. Go down to verse 25. It says, And Methuselah lived a hundred and eighty and seven years and begot Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begot uh, Lamech seven hundred eighty and two years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were nine hundred sixty and nine, nine years and he died. Now out of everybody listed there, here's Methuselah. He lived the longest. He lived to be nine hundred and sixty nine years old. And then, but he finally dies. Now he had a, a son named Lamech, and then Lamech has a son, it says in verse 29, uh, uh, no, verse 28, and Lamech lived 180 and two years and begot a son, and he called his name Noah, saying, uh, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. And Lamech lived after he begot Noah 590 uh, and five years, and begot sons and daughters, and all the days of Lamech were 770 and seven. That's an interesting number. <laughs> Lamech lives 700, he's 777 years old, but he's a lot, he, he actually dies before his son Methuselah. And, uh, and, and, but then he eventually dies, and then at verse 32, and Noah was 500 years old, and begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And he, there is an order to those births, but we're not so much interested in following Shem, Ham, and Japheth. We're just going to really stop here with Noah because we know what happens in the days of Noah. The flood comes. Now, again, some of the, just, just of the facts of the longevity of, of some of the people here. Um, uh, Oh, man, i got a bunch of stuff here. I forgot where I put it all. Um, we already pointed out Enoch and Adam living together. I wanted to point that out. That's 308 years that they lived together at the same time. If you go to Noah's dad, Lamech, uh, he, Noah's dad, 
knew Adam for 56 years of his life. You can't quite see the span here, but that's 56 years. So Noah's father had an opportunity to know his great, 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 great grandfather, Adam. Uh, and then uh, Noah knew Adam's grandson. If you take Enos here, he and Noah cross over. There we go. They cross over for 84 years that Noah knew the grandson of Adam. But the one who bridges the gap, Methuselah, he lives uh, 243 years with Adam, and then he also knew Noah for 600 years of Noah's life. The reason I say that is before you, it, it's Moses who's going to write us the book of Genesis. But before that, there's two, two things. The, the Bible indicates that people could read the stars and understand God's word from the stars. The second thing is word of mouth. If you live that long... It's Methuselah who could easily, and even Lamech, who could teach Noah all the things about Adam so that Noah can take it across the flood, give it to his three sons, and it passes on generation verbally. And when they say verbally, you're, you're talking about second account. Methuselah, first account. He shares it with Noah, so I got it from the guy who knew Adam. So you realize you're not just talking about things passed down for 1,600 years and it's all messed up by the time Noah gets it. He got it secondhand. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. And, and that's, that's part of the reason of looking at all the longevity and, and seeing all that connection there. But let's go back to Enoch now. Because, first of all, in, concerning Enoch and, and God translating him, uh, again, in verse 21, it says, And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah. There, there's a statement there, we've learned in Matthew, that when you throw these extra statements in, you know, to look at them close, there's a lesson there. You, you can obviously see it down in verse 29, when Lamech has Noah, and he calls him Noah, the same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground that the Lord hath cursed. That Noah's going to bring some comfort to some people. So there is some discomfort going on at the time, apparently. But you see some sp that Noah, as soon as he's born, there's a, some acknowledgement of something, there's some comfort that's going to come because of Noah. But back up in Enoch, he, he, it, it says again in verse 22, Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters. It's like the birth of Methuselah did something to Enoch where he walks with God and he walks with God to such a way that in verse 24, Enoch walked with God and was not for God took him. Well, there, the New Testament will tell us a little bit about Enoch. Go all the way back to the book of Jude, just before the book of Revelation. Now Jude is prophesying about a judgment of the world that's coming in, the fu in our future yet, about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and those that are living in rebellion against him and against government. And, and when you read the book of Jude, it's it, like the theme of it is in verse 4, for there, there are certain men, and he describes these certain men that God is going to judge. And when he talks about these certain men, you get to verse 14 of Jude and it says, and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of those, saying, The Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and all their hard speeches which, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So Enoch, way back the seventh from Adam, began to prophesy of these rebellious people. Now he's prophesying about the rebellious people in his day and about a judgment that's going to come in his day. But the Jude picks it up, talking about those same people are going to be around at the end time, those same kind of people in which Jesus Christ is going to actually be the ultimate fulfillment of that prophecy and come back and judge the world that are, that's ungodly in his day. So we know that when we get to the days of Noah, that the Bible says that every imagination of the thoughts of man was only evil continually, and it repented the Lord that he had made man, and he, he tells Noah, build an ark. He's about to judge the world. 
way back, I mean, you're back to year, what did we say it was? 600, uh, 622 years, <laughs> a thousand years <laughs> before the flood actually came. And, and a little bit past that because when Enoch has Methuselah, he becomes this preacher and begins to warn the world about a judgment that's going to come. And, and, and when he has his son Methuselah, that's when he begins to walk with God and he walks so with God, he never saw that judgment, did he? I mean, years before the judgment, he, he ends up raptured out. But, but when he had his son Methuselah, it, it, he, he named his son and then Methuselah, and then it said he walked with God from that time, after he begot Methuselah. And, and the reason why, if he's a prophet, and God has revealed something to him, it's found in the name Methuselah. And we're going to do this more next week, but Methuselah, Bible names have meanings to it. Sometimes when you read, you can find in the context the meaning. Uh, for instance, when in, we, we talk about previous about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the angel said, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So you know the name Jesus means something about save. And Jesus, it, it means Jehovah who saved, God who saves. And so th the names in your Bible do mean something. Now this one, it doesn't seem so apparent, but we know that when, he has Methuselah, when Enoch has Methuselah, he begins to walk with God. He begins to talk about a judgment that's coming. So it causes us to look at that name Methuselah real close. And when you do, you come up with this, that the name Methuselah, the, the first part of his name, it's M-E-T-H. Uh, but it, would, it could actually be spelled M-A-T-H in the sense that it almost sounds like math. But when you look at the first part of his name, it means full or extension, full adult life. And, and you go, hmm. That's interesting because <laughs> he surely had a full adult life. But when you talk about a full adult life, you're also talking about a full length of life that ultimately does come to an end. And, and so there's a, the idea of him not only having longevity, but something that's going to come at the end of his life. When he dies, the next part of that word, Selah, it means it shall come. Now, I can show you some things about Selah. Come over to... Uh, the book of Psalms, and look at verse, uh, uh, chapter 3. You'll see this all the way through the book of Psalms. It says, chap Psalms chapter 3. It says, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say, my, say of my soul, there is no help for him in God, Selah. Now, it, it, you just keep going down through the, the verse. It'll say, say some things, like in verse, you got three, but, but thou, O Lord, art my shield for me, uh, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of, the, out of his holy hill, Selah. Now, when you read, the commentaries will tell you that that word Selah, Psalms are things that, they're, they're, they're spiritual words put to music. These are the Psalms of David. You know, he played musical instruments, he wrote Psalms, they sang these things. And when you come to the word Selah, there's a pause there. And the idea of the pause is for, for people to stop and think, okay, look what just happened. And it says, uh, there, the people in verse 2 there said, there is no help for him in God, Selah. Think about that. So the pause causes you to think about the statement because there's two ways that the statement goes. As you go read through the Psalms and see those pauses, you'll find out that is there a help or isn't there? The help will come. It's not there right now, but it will come. And, and so there's all this, every time there's a selah, there's a, either a promise that judgment is going to fall to the enemy or that God is going to come and save like he promised to do. And so every time it says selah, it just is a, it, musically it's a pause, but it's a pause for you to think it's going to come. It's not here now, but it's going to come. So if you think about, you got meth, selah, Methuselah, and you got at the end of his life, it shall come. When he dies, it shall come. 
what his dad's talking about a judgment that's going to come upon the ungodly. And, and so when he, when, when he has a son born, God apparently reveals to Enoch, name him, when he dies, it shall come. Now, no one knows how long Methuselah's going to live. But when he dies, the judgment of Enoch is going to take place. Well, th there's a way that we can figure out when that, that's going to be, because we're lo looking past time. Lamech... Methuselah lived, it says, 187 years and beget Lamech, right? So Methuselah's 187 years old when Lamech is born. Lamech lives 182 years when Noah is born. You see that? Come over to Genesis chapter 5. In verse 27, it says, And all, oops, I'm in, not chapter 5, that's where we were. Uh, chapter 6, I've got to find the right verse. <laughs> no, ver, chapter 7. It says in verse 5, it says, And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him, and Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the water was upon the earth. So Noah was 600 years old when the flood came, right? How old's Methuselah when the flood came? Well, he's 187 years old when he has his son. His son is 182 years old when he has Noah. Noah was 600 years old when the flood came. You add those numbers together. Methuselah, we know he lived 969 years, right? The year that he died, look what took place. The flood came. And all the people that mocked Noah, now remember Noah, he only, he's building the ark for 120 years from the time that God told him the flood was going to come. People are mocking him, but for a thousand years before that ever happened, the world was becoming more and more ungodly. And God raised up a man to warn the world a thousand years before the flood came. And he named his son, son Methuselah. When he dies, it shall come. And it did come. And all the mockery, everybody, who, there was a, a time schedule. And what's amazing about that, if he's the longest man who ever lived, you know what you see in Methuselah? You see the grace of God. That God spared him to live longer than any other man because God wanted people to repent. But the world rejected the message of God and ultimately time ran out. And when Methuselah died, the very year he died, I would say the very day he died, the floods of water began to fill the earth and no one was safely with his sons in that ark and preserved to continue the generation afterwards. And then in the days of Noah, you start tracing these genealogies down and you find out people didn't live so long. Uh, Noah lives 315 years after, so he has longevity. But then, then the, it begins to diminish from that point on. So that God gave a warning and used Methuselah as a, as a testimony, which is an amazing prophecy. <laughs> when he dies, it shall come. And when he died, it came. God's word was fulfilled. And those who would not heed the warning they suffered the consequence of not listening to the prophecies and the promises of God way back, all the way back here in Genesis chapter 5. So that's the prophecy of, uh, of, uh, of Methuselah. Let me show you another verse before the bell rings. Come to Hebrews chapter 11, the faith chapter of the Bible. All that's interesting, you can see, I don't want to necessarily call it typology, but you just certainly do see how in the age of grace God is sparing the world today. And there is a hope for thus us who put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as the payment of our sins, that if we die, we're going to be resurrected. If we live until Jesus Christ comes, we have a hope of a rapture. Now some people actually say that Enoch really did die. But why don't you believe Hebrews 11 or Genesis 5 instead of them? In Hebrews 11. And